Hi folks, this is Tommy for Tommy's Outdoors podcast. And in this vlog, I want to add a few comments to a recently published blog post about fox hunting with hounds. The issue has to do with opposition to fox hunting. Uh, I hit on that briefly in that previous post because uh, there's no way to talk about fox hunting without mentioning its opponents. I have had a few interactions online with folks who are wholeheartedly opposed to fox hunting, and I have come to an interesting conclusion about their motivations. But before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Outdoors YouTube channel and to the podcast. Also, read more about fox hunting with hounds in the blog post I am talking about in this video. I started it all by wondering aloud about how many opponents of fox hunting with hounds are also advocates for the reintroduction of wolves into the landscape. I was thinking that wolves inevitably kill foxes the same way as hounds do. It is called intra-guild predation or IGP. It is the killing of potential competitors within an ecosystem. IGP is a combination of competition and predation. Both species rely on the same prey resource, or one benefits from preying on the other. For example, the re reintroduction of wolves into greater Yellowstone ecosystem in the United States caused a significant drop in coyote population through intra guild predation. Since foxes and coyotes are different, I wanted to find out what the interaction between wolves and foxes really looks like. So I spent several hours trying to find relevant articles and papers. Unfortunately, most of the materials I was able to find were related to ecosystems in the United States. There, the IGP looked like this. The greater number of wolves drove down the population of coyotes, which released the pressure on foxes, whose population went up. Obviously, I am grossly oversimplifying. But this seemed to challenge my original theory that the reintroduction of wolves into an ecosystem would drive down fox population. Then I found a paper in Nature magazine that described the European ecosystem. In Scandinavia, the lynx occupies the place between wolves and foxes. The dynamics between the species were fairly similar, with the exception that in places with no lynx, indeed, the presence of wolves caused a permanent decrease in the fox population. So this article supported my initial thoughts. I thought that people who oppose hunting with hounds have foxes' welfare first and foremost on their minds. To my surprise, it turned out they are completely okay with a fox being killed by a lynx or a pack of wolves. They claim this is natural, contrary to the unnatural killing by humans hunting with dogs. In my opinion, this reasoning is flawed in a couple of ways. Firstly, a natural killing by wolves isn't any less painful than an unnatural killing by dogs. A fox which is just about to be torn apart alive is not any more at peace with its fate because it's a pack of wolves rather than hounds that does the killing. Secondly, hunting by humans is as natural as hunting by wolves. We are a part of nature. Unless, of course, someone thinks that we were dropped here by aliens. Mainstream science tells us that the first stone tools and butchering marks on animal bones were found as early as 2 million years ago, roughly the same time as the dating of the first fossil specimen of a modern fox that was discovered in Hungary. So human hunters have been here as long as these other species. In the end, it was hard to avoid the conclusion that wildlife welfare does not matter to some who oppose fox hunting. They are just interested in imposing their own moral and ethical choices on others. I don't give a damn about the foxes, I just don't want those blokes to go hunting. This attitude is not productive. If we want to implement effective policies to protect wildlife and its habitat, we need to throw away emotional arguments and personal dislikes. The only way to get positive results is by looking at the scientific data and working with all stakeholders like sportsmen, ecologists, and farmers. So that's all, folks. Leave the comments, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to the podcast. Hit that like button, and I see you next time.